We're glad to have you on this uh, video with us today. We're going to hear from Vidi Diana Diaz, who was an active member of our MBS chapter at West Texas A&M University. And the first question I have for you today, Vidi, is to talk about your experience with NBS and how maybe some of those experiences helped you in your job with the Thunder, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Vidi Diana. Everybody calls me either Vidi or V. Um, uh, I was a rocking member of NBS uh, back in the day. Um, <laughs> and um, I got to go to two conventions. Uh, we got to host a regional convention um, at WT while I was there my freshman or sophomore year. Um, I got to, it was just a way to like get involved and it was a way to, to, it was just kind of an expectation like, hey, you're a broadcasting student. This is a club you got to be in. So I was all for it. Um, we got to do a lot of really fun stuff. We got to network with a bunch of people that we probably wouldn't have been able to connect with. Um, a lot of like like-minded students nationwide that I thought were, that I still actually 10 years later have still um, kept connections with either through social media or, um, you know, just, hey, are you good? Good. Okay, cool. And then, you know, I'll see you when I see you kind of situation. Um, but yeah, NBS was really fun. We, I got, I won two two national awards, three national awards, um, a couple of regional awards here and there. Um, but I remember I, did, I didn't get to go to the national one that I had like three trophies in. So that was kind of a bummer, but, um, but yeah, it was really great. I had a great experience with NBS. Excellent. So you work now as a video photographer and graphics editor for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yes, um, and so I'd love for you to tell us more about your current job, what you do. So literally right now, like this very second, I just realized that um, three of my videos just got nominated for an Emmy. <gasps> so yeah, that rocks. <laughs> like literally right now. Um, we do long form stuff. We do short, um, we do like hype videos. We do um, if a player has a or organization that they want to not sponsor, but that they want to highlight um, community relations stuff. Really, we're just the video hub for the team. So whatever video needs we may need, um, they kind of come to us and we kind of go from there. Um, we've we've gotten to do documentaries, both in English and in Spanish. We've gotten to do um, Hype video, obviously, like hype videos for social media and graphics heavy stuff. Um, and then just like your normal storytelling about um, things that we've um, encountered, fans that have incredible stories that um, that need to be told. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's really what we do. And I know you've talked about being on the floor with the team and how um, you're one of the few women um, in that type of role. Um, you want to say something about that too? So it's been really interesting to see that just because um, we, there's not that many of us. And, um, and if you are in the room, then you're expected to like do more <laughs> just because, you know, you're supposed to show your chops, right? You're supposed to show that you're, you know, like people will randomly talk about like, well, talk basketball with me and I'll talk basketball with them because I'm a genuine fan and it, it kind of seems to catch some people off guard so I feel like you always have to kind of check yourself and um I don't know how to say that without me sound rude but like you really um have to like unfortunately have to prove yourself all the time which is not great um and like other arenas thankfully with my team and with our department um we've had such a great mix of like ideas and I feel like we're super valued and in, in our creativity and so um, I haven't felt that in our space but when you go to other spaces you definitely see how um, there's not that many of us and so whenever I do come across uh, another female photographer or um, videographer whatever it, I usually try to make a point to reach out and say hi and you know, just, just at least have a quick conversation. Um, but yeah, we, 
there's not that many of us. So the more the merrier, like jump in, your input is needed. Like the more women that we have, I feel like you, you bring in it's kind of special sauce to the team, right? And so um, it's, it's nice, it's nice to be able to do all that. Excellent. Um, can you tell us some of your favorite highlights since you've been working there with the Thunder? What are some, some favorite moments that you've had while you've been there? Um, uh, walking into, so I, I was a Laker fan growing up my entire life, basically. I grew up in LA. And um, walking into Staples for the first time was like, as a, as a team member and not as a fan was kind of cool. Um, I remember like walking in thinking in LA because during NBS we went to LA and we actually caught a Laker game and I remember being like man I want to be down there like I want to be there and when I finally flipped it and was actually there and they were paying me to be at the Staples Center and they were paying me to be on the floor I just thought like whose life is this <laughs> what is this um, that was incredibly neat um, my favorite um another favorite moment russell westbrook broke the triple rec triple triple double record in denver and i was on the floor for that and um i mean just little moments that you don't even think that you're gonna be a part of like you're now in charge of documenting it so don't mess it up you know this is a once in a lifetime thing so um yeah, there's been a, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. I was there when uh, Russell came back for the first time. The jerseys that we we did the Oklahoma City bombing memorial jerseys this year, um, and going through that process has been incredible. Listening to the stories of the bombing survivors has been insane, um, and deeply emotional and rooted. And you don't realize how much. Um, connection and how much like vibrato um their stories have and how much connection they have with the team um and so it, it that's been really neat in fact that's one of the stories i got nominated for an emmy is the day that we revealed um those those jerseys to those families and it was emotional for everybody um but man we just wanted to do a good job because their stories deserved it you know so i think those were probably some of the highlights that i had can you tell us about that path that you took to get to the Thunder? Because I know you've talked to me about jobs and about networking that helped open some doors. So can you tell students about that path? So I started working while I was still in college um, at in Amarillo at Channel 10, the CBS affiliate there in Amarillo. So I was um, going to school full time, shooting part time or working night side um, and weekends. Um, and they really just you know, small markets, they throw a camera in your hands and they go. And um, that was really, um, you learn a lot. <laughs> you learn how to shoot highlights. You learn how to shoot breaking news. You learn how to shoot all sorts of stuff. So even if news is not necessarily what you want to do, I feel like news is a good place to start because it teaches you, one, how to be responsible with your time. It teaches you how to really bob and weave through stuff because you you have to you have to um you're a one man band you just have to figure it out um and then after that i spoke with my boss and i said hey like i don't want to i i thank you for the opportunity um is there I'm, i want to move on from here is there a way to do that and he said yeah i have some connects in oklahoma city let me reach out blah blah, blah. and he reached out to people in dallas oklahoma city and austin and I got two job offers from Oklahoma City and Austin and um, ended up choosing Oklahoma City just because it was closer to my family. Um, and uh, I shot with an, an NBC affiliate here in, in Oklahoma City for a couple of years. Um, and it was great. Got to go on the chopper all the time, got to do all sorts of fun stuff all the time. Um, but obviously with more people, you see a lot of more craziness and it just wasn't a right fit for me anymore. Um, so I went and started looking for jobs. I applied at KUSA in Denver. Um, go facts. Sorry, my dog is ripping off a box. Um, I applied at, at KUSA in Denver and was in serious talks with them. Um, but then, uh, my boyfriend who worked security for the Thunder, 
um, he said, hey, one of the video guys is leaving. Um, so you might want to apply. So I said, okay. So I applied. I never heard a call back from them at all. Um, and um, I was still working for Channel 4 trying to figure it out. And um, ended up running into my future boss at one of the stories. And I had helped him out because he was running late and I had my lighting set up. So I had, I just told him, I'm like, hey, click in your camera and get in this interview um, and do what you gotta do. And he was like, oh, okay, great. And after they left, um, I, I, I didn't recognize him. So I said, hey, like I introduced myself and he thanked me for helping him out with his situation. And um, when he said his name, I was like, you're the hiring manager for the Thunder, right? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, I applied for a job that you're currently looking for. Um, here's my business card. <laughs> and so he, he said, yeah, like, let me, let me pull your, your resume. And he said, oh yeah. He emailed me literally the next day and said, Hey, the reason why we didn't call you is because your link to your YouTube reel didn't work. So they, that just discarded me totally. Um, cause they had so many applicants. And so, um, I sent him a working one <laughs> and then, uh, like two weeks later or a week later, I had an interview two weeks later, I had the job. So if it wasn't for, um, like I just saw him struggling and he needed, he needed um, to get this certain interview and everything was already set up and I don't know, just helped him out. <laughs> and it ended up working out for me as well. So I've, this will be my fourth, I guess fourth season with the Thunder. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's, that's literally how I got the job is just by being nice to my future boss without even knowing it. <laughs> I love that story. And so I'm glad, <laughs> glad you shared it. Um, what other recommendations other than like, be nice to people, you never know who you're <laughs> being nice to. Um, what other recommendations do you have for current students who might want to do the same type of work that you do or work um, in some other media job? What recommendations would you share with them? So I've thought about this and here's a couple of things. One, if you want to do hype videos and all that stuff, then dive into After Effects, get on YouTube, get on lynda.com, LinkedIn has some stuff too. There's some courses that you can take online, jump into After Effects and jump in, like just, you just need to do it. And because there's a lot of people that are self-taught that are really great and that are actually, we have a guy who does graphics who was an artist, but he decided that he needed to take his you know, his handwritten stuff into actual, into a digital space. So he learned and taught himself all that stuff. So I would say really jump into After Effects, get after that. And if, even if you have like, um, if, if you're in a D1, D2, whatever school, whatever, make hype videos for your friends that are athletes, make approach, approach, even if you don't have any friends that are athletes, approach the, some of the athletic teams and see if you can, do anything with them because you there's always opportunities to to really bump up your reel just by having a go-to attitude and asking people hey and plus who doesn't want a cool video for their social media you know like of course why not so like have, you know buy somebody lunch and and let them you know, hey, can you do this? Okay, now dribble the ball or do this or here's some slow-mos of this or we need to get you running but building up your own tape, you don't necessarily need a professional um, opportunity to do that. If you, if you have the chops, um, just like go after it, I think. Um, and then, cause, cause we do have a guy right now who, um, he, he went and got his master's, but while he was doing his master's, um, he was also on the football team and he was doing, the, he was like the media team and one of the captains for the football team at the same time. And so he, um, he built up his tape that way. And that's how he got the job that, um, that he's on our department as well. Excellent. Um, other things that you hope to do, you haven't gotten to do yet in your, you know, post NBS days. What, what have you not gotten um, yet that you want to do? I want to, I haven't knocked out all of the NBA arenas yet. I want to I want to knock all of those out. Um, the most impressive ones that 
the most impressive ones that I've been to. I finally got to go shoot at Madison Square Garden, which was insane. Um, I got to shoot at Staples, um, at the United Center in Chicago. Miami is a lot of fun. Um, I haven't gotten to go to like Memphis and Indianapolis and random cities like that. But um, I do want to, that's, that's one thing that I do want to do is, is um, uh, knock out all of the arenas. But overall, I just think that if, if you work hard, obviously there's opportunities and breaks that I had, that I got that I was blessed with <laughs> that were like the meeting my boss thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's just about being prepared and, and being flexible and you know did I want to do news for my entire life no um but it was a good opportunity it taught me a lot about cameras it taught me a lot about lighting and different situations I mean I can three-point light the heck out of an interview you know what I mean just because you never you, you never know what situation what kind of window and situation you're going to have and so I feel like just being flexible and not this is my passion project and I want to do this that's great but know that there's steps to get there and you need to build up to get there. And while you're building, you know, like do something creative, but also do something productive. Cause ultimately as creatives, you have to pay the bills. Your rent's not going to get paid by itself. You have to pay the bills and you also have to express yourself creatively. So try to find a balance between those two things. And I think that's probably what I would tell students now is like, just, your first job is probably not going to be great, <laughs> and you're but you're going to meet a lot of great people that are going to come up in the industry with you um, who are going to have the same kind of like stories and all of that stuff. So um, that would be my advice. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. We're going to open it up for questions from um, others who've joined us here today. And so we'll see what questions they have for you now. And you guys could unmute yourselves when you um, want to ask a question. What would be your biggest advice to an outgoing senior going into the field currently? Um, sorry, my dog is, can y'all hear him? I apologize. He is. Um, my biggest, just do the work. Do the work. Like find, find a place where you can grow and do the work. Um, just say yes to the things, even, even if it ruins your weekend plans or whatever else, like, yes, I can be there. Cause you want to, you, you want to make a good impression on these people. Your first job, you want to make a good impression. She's a hard worker. She'll say, you know, she'll, she's, she'll be there. She's reliable when you need her. Um, and that way, when you, you can use that as your catalyst for your next job. And man, she was really great all the time. She was this, she was that. And so people, We'll talk about you um, whenever you you know your client references and stuff because this this whole industry is very small and now that I've gotten into sports it's smaller because everybody jumps from team to team. Um, well now I work for the NFL. Well now I work for the NHL. Now I work for the Olympics and it's all over the place. So really, what you want to establish yourself is establish yourself as a hard worker, and then from there. You can throw in whatever special sauce you have and, you know, whatever. Hey, like, for example, I was like, hey, I speak Spanish fluently. Can I do a documentary? First year, they were like, relax. <laughs> Third year, I guess what I'm saying. So you do the work. You have you, you give yourself a, a, a good reputation, and then you can jump from there, really. But, yeah, that's what I would say. Just show up. Show up. Thanks, Thank you. Another question. Um, you said you do a lot with After Effects. I'm actually self-taught with After Effects. Is yeah, there girl. any other programs that you suggest learning? I mean, your Adobe, I mean, as long as you're pretty great with Adobe, then the Creative Cloud, I feel like all of those kind of go in. Professionally, I've worked with literally every editing system ever, um, from like Edius to Avid to Final Cut 7, to Final Cut Pro, to Final Cut X, like, so I would say learn to not hate Avid, 
<laughs> and, um, and just, yeah, I, I would just say learn how to like move things between Adobe software and that way you can work, oh, I need to adjust this picture for this or I need to do this. I'm not great at it. I'm okay at it. Um, my really, my strength is storytelling, but, um, we have our graphics guys can do some crazy things, but, and, and all they do is just work from, from, you know, from software to software, from screen to screen. So I would say, um, just keep, keep going on those YouTube and Belinda, whatever tutorials and just kind of keep killing it, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, BD, first of all, congratulations on the breaking news of your- Thank you. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> uh, all humility aside, what do you think it was about those pieces that, uh, that got you nominated? Um, well, let me check which ones it were. Um, okay, here we go. Um, there is... There was a Make-A-Wish, um, a Make-A-Wish feature, um, and the Memorial Jersey Night. Mm. I think the bones of the story were good. The it was it was a story that needed to be highlighted and a story that um, that you need to really do a good job with, um, but. I don't know some I don't know because some days you have really great stories and then they, you put them together in the edit and you're like well that didn't turn out as nice as I thought they would but I don't know it's, I feel specifically with the Jersey night I felt like that one was a was really important to the entire city because the Oklahoma standard came out of the bombing and a lot of that stuff a lot of what the city is now came from the construction and the kind of the upswing from the bombing. And so um, as a community leader, we had to really show out on that one. So we had every single person on our department working that night and it was a pretty, pretty massive night. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what it was about it. Um, the one over here, the, the Emmy that I have here. Oh, look! Here's an Emmy yes award right here. Boom! Yeah. Um, that one. The story was also great. So when you have a really great story, really knock it out of the park. I would say. Um, and and make sure that you know your focus is tight and your audio is good and that kind of stuff because because nothing ruins a great story faster than technical issues. If you can notice a technical issue in a good story, then you've lost your audience. It's like, why is her mind cutting out like earlier? Like, what did she say? <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that's what I would say. Did that answer your question? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's good to share what uh, you feel that excellence, uh, what excellence is, is recognized, you know, um, and, and you have to be, you have to be honest about that. Um, yeah. If you, you've described yourself as a storyteller and, and it seems like it's when you told the story well, that's, that's when it got recognized. That's great. Thank you. Technical tightness and a good story and making it personal for people. I think that's probably the, when you really hit people right in the feels, um, and there's obviously different categories, but the ones that we submitted, those were, they kind of, oh, they, they hit you, you know? And so I think that's probably what I would say. Yeah. And Vidi, the one that you have, the Emmy that's up there behind you, that was from uh, the trip to Spain, right? And no. Bogotá? So I've, since, with the, since I've been with the Thunder, I've been nominated for like, I guess, five or six times now and I've only won once. Um, but this one was, they had, um, the story was absolutely insane. The two men that two men were falsely convicted of a murder and the, um, 
the Innocence Project actually got them out. And um, the first thing that they said that they wanted to do after their 22 years of, of imprisonment uh, was go to the Thunder Game. Because the Thunder wasn't around when they went in to, went to jail. And so we were like, yeah, come on by. <laughs> and uh, we gave them like the VIP treatment. They got to, um, they got to meet the players after the game. They got signed balls. They got all sorts of really cool stuff. And, um, but that was the story that, that, that story alone is crazy. They were, they were 19 and 20 when they went in and they were 40 when they got out. Um, and it was because another man on death row, as he was being executed, said, oh yeah, by the way, I also committed this murder. These people had nothing to do with it. And then he died. And so that's what set them free. <laughs> and so the, the fact that they wanted to come see a basketball game and be in there, I mean, they were elated. I mean, they were elated. They were so excited to be there and they opened up. Um, and we really had great interviews with them, but yeah, that, that was, that was it. That's, that's what we got there. But the one in the last year I got nominated and didn't win. Okay. But yeah. That sounds amazing. I want to watch that one. You have, I'll send, you, I'll you, send it to you. Yeah. Okay. I'll send you, Excellent. I'll send you the links. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Thank you. I will say this much on a personal note, the craziest thing that's ever happened to me while working with the Thunder has been um, this year. On like a personal and professional note, um, I was, we had, I was working at the game that was, was a catalyst for the NBA shutting down, the whole league shutting down. We were playing Utah that night. And um, that morning I found out I was pregnant. And so I found out I was pregnant at like noon and then at seven, the NBA shut down. So that was the most memorable, crazy day of my life. <laughs> Just like, what is happening? But, um, but thankfully we've, we've, we've been able to work from work. We're been able to work from home and the team's been really great and, but man, it's been a wild ride lately. So I would say, going back to like, what would you say to students that are coming into the industry? Buckle up because you don't know what's going to happen. Something like this could happen and you just have to roll with it. People that were a little bit more flexible have been a little bit more successful. And people that haven't been are having a harder time. So in this craziness that we're currently in, I would just say, you know, you just got Bob and Weave, you know, the boxing match, and you just gotta, you just gotta keep going and 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 keep doing the work, and and that's it. That's all I got, Dr. Kinski. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm really excited that 2020 is is turning out pretty good for you. <laughs> um, so that's that's nice. It's um, that's that's an excellent surprise of getting the Emmy nods today yeah that was crazy that five minutes into the interview look at look at me go